And good morning. On a Friday morning, a kind of a bleak, rainy Friday morning. However, I hear the weather's supposed to clear up a little bit this weekend. By this afternoon, be relatively nice. Uh, after a tough day at the office, driving home, I will admit, I, I listen to them. Uh, sometimes I laugh very hard. Sometimes I'm a little confused at what I'm listening to. But they really are two of Chicago's most popular and innovative radio personalities. Uh, they were shocked, as were many of us last week, by the sudden death of their close friend and colleague, uh, Marcus Palmer. Marcus was a studio aide and a constant companion. His tragic death was all the more ironic and chilling in the light of Steve Dahl and Gary Meyer's irreverent treatment of death in the past, a song parody of the John Wayne Gacy murders, a biting look at the demise and the legacy of Elvis Presley, and routines following the uh, death of actor Paul Lynn. Those are just a few examples of some of the hist hist satirical, humorous manner in which they have treated death on the air. Steve Dahl and Gary Meyer are with us this morning, along with Channel 7 critic at large, John Calloway. John, Gary, Steve, good morning. Hi, Rob. Hi. Good morning, Rob. Gentlemen. I thought we were coming here to talk about breath. <laughs> no. <laughs> I misunderstood. Like how celebrities keep their breath smelling... Uh, Fresh. I want to be. I want to be serious, at least for a bit, for for starters, uh, because I I had met Marcus when I came over to, to uh, do Celebrity Jeopardy with you fellas, and had a nice chat with him. He's a fun guy, and I know you you loved him both. Uh, you loved him. Has his death changed the way? Have Have you rethought the way that you handle death or satirize it? Yeah. How? <laughs> I was afraid you were going to ask the follow up question. Uh, well. I personally uh, have never uh, had to deal with death. Um, you mean you, hitting that close to home? You got your parents. Uh, They're alive. My well, my grandfather died, but he was 81. So, 81, you figure, yeah. that's a long life. That's okay. Uh, and uh, we actually were never that close. Uh, Marcus, Marcus's death. Uh, well, he, you know, that was the the closest that it's you know ever come to me, death. And uh, so, sure, yeah, we, I, I rethought it. I, I think, uh, I think uh, I will always think now a little bit more before I dive into one of my uh, satirical death raps. Are you saying that you've got regrets on, on what you said in the past? No, no. I, I, you know, I think you can only be responsible for what you are at any given time. I mean, up until Marcus's death, I thought the way I thought. Now I think differently. I don't regret the way I thought in the past. I ha that's just the way I thought. You know, that was my frame of reference at that point. What will you do differently now? Well, uh, like I said, I, I think I'll, I'll think more about uh, the consequences of what I do uh, in terms of the families of the people that have died. Because uh, I guess I never really thought about that before because the closest I ever came to death was just seeing it on TV, on the news and stuff. You mm -hmm. know, Guiana, 912 people dead. Oh, and then it's, you know, you don't think about the families of those people. You just, you think about uh, Jim Jones and how weird that all was. And I would sort of go off on that tangent uh, because it doesn't seem real when you see it on your 17-inch tube. At least it didn't up until last week. Gary, I want to get your thoughts on, on, on the same thing, too. Are you rethinking, uh, has it affected you uh, in ways that surprised you? Did it scare you when, when Marcus died? It scared me, but I had a close friend of mine die in a car accident. And he was 23, and I was the same age at the time. So this uh, was very similar, and I remember my thoughts then, and, and they were very similar to what happened last week. I was very confused then, and I wanted to know more about death after that happened. So I really took an interest in finding more out about death. How much you can find out, I don't know. But I went to hear uh, Dr. Kubler-Ross do a lecture at uh, Northwestern once, and um, I, I just opened up a lot to death, whereas before I pushed it away, mm -hmm. it never really touched me before that. Marcus's death once again came very close, and uh, the next 36 hours after his death, I spent just really thinking about everything in general. And maybe we should be a little uh, more reverent when we uh, talk about people who have died. So I'm still going through that process right now. I mean, it's still very fresh in my mind. John uh, Calloway, you know, John did a five-part series on you in the 430. And John, what difference? 100 and, 131. 
part series. <laughs> it only seemed like 130, but it was actually 131 parts. As you're listening to, to Stephen Gary, what, what I can't I can't believe what I'm hearing for, for one. I mean, to be to be serious about it for one thing, <clears throat> the, the the distinction that uh, Stephen Gary have never been able to make to the satisfaction of some people is this matter of distance in death. When it happens close to them, they respond. Uh, we did a thing at the TV Academy the other day in which Steve, I think, made a very uh, interesting differentiation between Paul Lynn's death and John Belushi's death. He didn't know Paul Lynn, and so he was doing material about it. Uh, John Belushi died. He knew Belushi, had a great deal of affection for him, and it wasn't a laughing matter, uh, except maybe to the extent that it is at some later point. And yet, <clears throat> after the death of their friend, I'm driving down the road the other day listening to a, an extraordinarily funny and yet at the same time uh, irreverent piece on um, uh, the guy that went out <coughs> and uh, uh, shot 56 people in Korea. in Korea. This is a, and you took the wire, it is a, this guy is a genius. He takes plain straight wire copy. Man's wife comes in, hits a fly that uh, she thinks <laughs> on it. He gets up, he's angry, he goes out and shoots 56 people. I'm kind of, as a journalist, interested in how is it that we as journalists can begin to make people understand that the whole world is human and when somebody dies in Korea, it's, it's a serious thing and we ought to feel our humanity globally. And in a way, this man is just as irreverent about death if, if it's a proper distance than he's mm -hmm. ever been. And yet, the great value of what he did is I don't think I got out of the reading of the newspaper the kind of humanity that his irreverence finally put into the story. I'm feeling the story, even as he's irreverently, and I was kind of angry with him, chuckling at each shooting. Well, now, somebody lost family in that situation. Uh -huh. you know? are, are you saying that what Steve and Gary do are profound in that area? Well, I don't want to accuse them of being profound, but I am... <laughs> don't I, do that. Yeah, right. I mean, these guys are nice guys. But, but I, do, I do think that they have a way of stirring things up. I also happen to think that they have been for a long time. The brilliance of what they do is that they are preoccupied with both life and death. Their very program is like going, listening to their program, is like going to an automobile race and secretly hoping for a crash. <laughs> you wonder how, you wonder if they're going to kill themselves uh, you, but you know, uh, on the air. It, I mean, what that boils down to, I guess at times, uh, is the word responsibility. And uh, we've got to break away for commercial already. Thank goodness. Yeah, we're going to be back, though, with Steve Dahl, Gary Meyer, John Calloway. And what do you think of the way the media and the, maybe this media in general as well, Steve and Gary, uh, handle death? I want you to share your view with us, 5919000. We'll line your calls up. We'll be right back.